guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with your most disappointing books of 2021. I have like literally two and a half, three, two and a half pages full of you Lord most disappointing reads. So I have a lot to get to. Some I agree with, some that hurt my heart when you wrote that you didn't like them, and I know you knew it would hurt my heart because you guys know what books I love. And so it was so fun reading these. I got them off of Instagram. I asked in my stories what your worst books of 2021 are. So I will go ahead and chat with you about what you guys thought were the worst books of 2021 not necessarily published in 2021 but that you read in 2021 so the first one there were two that were like overwhelmingly popular that were both also both overwhelmingly popular in my favorites video of 2021 so I already did this asking your favorite romances I can link that down below or in the cards up top but this one is the love hypothesis which so many people were like I hated this it was so boring I DNF'd it I love this book and now like looking back I've seen some people I know Riley talked about it and someone else did about how cringy the intimate scene was and I was like I don't even recall that happening but I did listen to the audiobook and I thought they were so cute together and someone did say also that they didn't love how they acted around each other in an academic professional setting like she sat on his lap at a conference and you're like you wouldn't do that if you were really a professional but I just thought it was so cute and I loved their banter and their relationship and and how they slowly fell for each other. So I personally really like this one, but I can see how some people wouldn't love it. So yeah. Okay, so the next one that everybody was overwhelmingly agreeing on, but also disagreeing because it was in my other video, overwhelmingly, was The Spanish Love Deception. This one I'm actually really scared of reading because I have friends who've read it that thought it was really boring, but I know Lacey really loved it. Lisa thought it was boring, and I know a lot of other people said it was really slow, and it's a really long book, and I don't know if I'm gonna love it because I don't like long, slow, contemporary romances but people say it's fake dating they love the hero in this book so I have not read this yet because I'm scared I might read it though for reading your favorite romances of 2021 reading vlog that I want to do but I'm scared because like I said tons of people voted for this for this video but a lot of people put it in my favorites video so I don't know let me know what you thought of this book because People cannot agree on what they thought. The next one's not surprising. It's A Crown of Gilded Bones, and people already said Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I did not love A Crown of Gilded Bones, and I also have her new book, which is Crown in the Ember, which I have sitting right there that I started and stopped because I'm 80 pages in and nothing's happened. So I think that her books are pretty repetitive and slow, and her new book, I guess, is like a lot similar to books that she's already written and I don't think they need to be as long as they are because not a lot actually happens in those books and I did not love book three in the series. I feel like not a lot even happened. Like they would spend so much time going somewhere and spend like two seconds there and leave and I was like what was the point of this build-up to nothing happening there so I can definitely see why people voted for I think like a ton of her books in this series I don't know if all of them people had commented on but at least these two did, people did and I can definitely see why so I know McKay from oh hey it's McKay put this one in and that is Gabriel's Inferno I just finished watching her most disappointing reads of 2021 I DNF this book last year I do not know what people see in this book if you like it that's great but I think now today it doesn't really read that well. If I read it back when like Fifty Shades was popular, even though I did not love Fifty Shades when I read it while it was popular, I might have had more grace with how it was written, but I was not a fan of this. It, I DNF'd it, I did not love anything about it, but people are diehard for this, but I definitely agree with McKay that it was just not, not it for me. Someone said the bride test, which hurts me because I love Helen Huang and I know a lot of people didn't love the third book, which is The Heart Principle because of how women's fiction it was because the first half I was reading it and I was like this is definitely romance but then I was like oh it definitely turns into more about her family but the bride test was really good and I really loved it I don't know if I loved it more than book one but I thought it was just so sweet and I love the heroine and everything that she was going through moving to America trying to have a better life for her daughter back home and how she fell for the hero it was so cute and like the hero learning to be in a relationship with her I really liked it but I guess you didn't which is fair which is fair but I love this one People Who Meet on Vacation was not the worst book I read this year, but it, I think it was disappointing. I did not love all the flashbacks, and I say this every time I talk about this book, but I don't love books where they, like, hype up a secret that doesn't get revealed until like 80% into the book and the secret's so disappointing. The thing that caused them to go be apart in the past was revealed really far into the book and it was so disappointing for me. It was so lackluster, anticlimactic. I was just like, that's really what caused you guys to stop talking. It wasn't something super exciting and then it was just okay. Like I didn't care for it as much as everyone else did. This one I know not a lot of people like. 
It's one of my favorite books of the year. It is Forget Me Not by Kibi Tyler, and I say every time I talk about this book, there is cheating. He cheated on her. We get it. That scene of him cheating on her and her confronting him, and it's a messy book. It is a very messy book. He cheated on her. Their marriage broke apart. He has amnesia now, and he didn't know that anything that had happened, and he's horrified that he would ever do that, and they have to work through it. It is a messy book. I love messy books. I love angsty books. I just filmed my favorite toxic romances that I got from Naima from Naima Reads that I have an idea from. I don't, I think this will go at first, but that's coming. I just love messy romances. And so that's why I love this book. And so I know a lot of people have read it and they're like, but I don't like cheating in my books. So that's why I always say the hero had cheated on her and that's why they're getting a divorce, but they're trying to make up now because he has amnesia and he's like diehard fighting to get his wife back. So I love this, but there are elements to it that I know not a lot of people will like. So the next one I feel like always shows up. Like I, it was in my overhyped romances video and that is the Fallen Men series which again is a series that is definitely for a specific reader and I feel like the more popular a series becomes the more people there are that won't like it because they're not typical to that genre or reading that. Someone even said they didn't like Inked and Lies which is my favorite in the series and one of my favorite books of the year. You guys are so killing me not liking my favorite books of the year but it is fair. I get that they're not for everybody and Gianna Darling does have more long, I don't want to say like long-winded, but very more descriptive writing, especially I noticed in some of her books more than others. It's a lot of writing in like emotions and thinking than plot, but Inked and Lies I absolutely loved. It was an age gap. It was super angsty. I really liked, but it's fair if you don't like that kind of taboo. I think a lot of people don't love Welcome to the Dark Side because of the nature of that relationship. They are very taboo. All of her books are taboo. All of her books are dark. And I get why some people don't love them. I, of course, love them. So someone else said Throttled by Lauren Asher. And I actually agree with this one, though I wouldn't say it's the worst book I read, but it was definitely disappointing. There wasn't anything, like, super special about this book. But again, it was super hyped on TikTok, so I read it. And it was just okay. I think I gave it four stars, but I think that was being generous. And nothing was super special about the romance and I feel like it was kind of insta-love. I'm interested in continuing on and I know Tori from Novel Life Loves I think book three which I'm excited to read because I think that's the heroine's brother possibly. It might not be but I really want to continue on though I'm not interested in book, the book two couple at all who was in book one but maybe let me know if I can skip that but I do think that this series is really overhyped and I was kind of disappointed when I picked it up. Someone else said The Holiday Swap. This one I read this year and it is a Christmas romance and I know book of the month had this one so a lot of people people are reading it. I thought it was the cutest thing ever, though I was in the mood for a cute Christmas romance, and I typically don't like romances as, like, sweet as this. It's just a romance about twins swapping lives, and it was just everything I wanted when I read it, so that's why I loved it, but I think, like, now I'm totally burnt out on sweet Christmas romances. Like, I could care less, so I think I would hate it now if I read it, but it was just the right time for me to read it, so that's why I love this one, but I can see why some people wouldn't love it. Someone else said Portrait of a Scotsman, which I don't want to read any Evie done more anymore. I didn't love book two. I think I tried reading and I DNF'd it. I'm over publishers using trade paperback illustrated covers for historical romances and they always feel a little bit watered down and like they are for non-romance readers. So I'm not surprised you didn't like this one because I'm not picking up this author or other books like this. Someone said Cruel Prince by Age Aid, which I think is a pretty old book. Not like old, but like at least three years old, I think. I think I read it last year. I enjoyed it, but it is a bully romance. I think a lot of people don't love bully romances, and this one I thought was just pretty entertaining, but it wasn't like the best thing I've ever read, but I know people really love this series, and I did enjoy book two as well, but I am really over high school bully romances at the moment, so I don't know if I'd like it if I read it right now. Someone said Midnight Sun, and I don't even remember like when this book came out. Was it last year or this year? I don't know. I have no interest in reading this book. I haven't even heard if people liked it or not. Like, that's it's that far off my radar. Then we have Hooked by Emily McIntyre, which is surprising because I know a lot of people are reading this and really loving it. I have not read it yet. I really want to read it. It's a dark Peter Pan retelling. We have Hook, and I think it's with Wendy, and I don't know Tori from Novel Life love this one, and I don't know if she said it was, like, Peter's daughter is Wendy? I don't remember. I'm really excited to read this, but I think I will lower my expectations a little bit knowing that someone thought it was one of the worst books I read this year, or disappointing, but we'll see. This one, I know two people said this, I think, and one was Jen from The Book Refuge, and that is North of the Stars by Monica James, one of my absolute favorite covers of the year. It is gorgeous, but I also agree this was pretty disappointing because of 
the choices that were made for this. So our hero and our heroine, it's a Viking romance. He is a Viking and she is from a family that's like not Vikings and like they're rivals with the Vikings and her family like ends up capturing him and he ends up serving her family and her kingdom, I guess. And he tells them like the secrets of his people to beat them in war and she's a princess and she gets like married off to someone at 14, spends years being raped by her betrothed father and then the hero ends up like kind of showing up and it, they're they're apart for a lot of the book. Her, the hero and the heroine are not together for like 60% of the book, like physically in the same place and the hero is married for a lot of it and I don't know if it's supposed to be a love triangle. I didn't really buy the other romance so I'm not sure if I was supposed to and it just felt very like old school bodice ripper written today which it just didn't work that well for me and I was really sad because I love Monica James and I was so excited she was writing a Viking romance and this was pretty violent and dark so know that going in and she is assaulted for like three four years straight by someone serving as their mistress unwillingly so know that going in if you decide to pick this one up but I didn't love it I gave it three and a half stars and rounded it down to three I really did like some aspects of it so when I was talking about it I think I went up to four but then talking to Jen I was like well maybe not loving it so much so I just don't know what I think about this book someone said beautiful bastard by Christina Lauren this one is also one that I think is dated and I don't know how well it would read today it came out a long time ago and I I remember they like got down to it very early on in the book and they were supposed to hate each other and I was like what is happening but I don't know if it lives up today. I just think it's a time thing where we've evolved so much from this series that I don't think it would read as well for readers today. Someone said makeup breakup which I don't know if this had to do with like apps or the tech industry. There were a lot of romances coming out about like dating apps and stuff and I did not read this because I know nobody liked it and I was it was one of my most anticipated of the year. I think this author was Sandia Menon who wrote young adult books and this was her adult pen name and I don't think people love any of her adult stuff she's been writing so I've been wary to pick anything up by her and I have not yet so I know a lot of people agree with this one. Someone said again The Magic by Lisa Kleypas which actually gave this one four stars but it was just such a good second chance romance so it does make me sad that you didn't love this. I'd like to know why people don't love Again the Magic because the hero and the heroine were in love as teenagers but he was I think a stable boy and she was from a titled family so her family breaks him apart, sends him off and then he's really angry but he's a self-made man they come back. I didn't love the secondary romance I just wanted to focus on Aileen and, and McKenna but it was good but I guess people didn't like it. Okay, so this one I actually just talked about in my last video I filmed. That is There Is No Devil by Sophie Lark, and I agree. I was so disappointed in this book. I love There Are No Saints, which is book one in the duet. This is book two. It was a lot slower. The angst and the tension between them was just gone. They were just already together and didn't play games with each other anymore, and it got a lot of their her background, and like not a lot happened plot-wise in this book until the end. So I was really disappointed. I think I'm giving it three stars. I read it like two days ago, so I haven't written my review yet, but yeah. This one I think is a three star read. When book one was so good and I rave about it all the time and gave it five stars, I was disappointed in the second book. Then we have Neon Gods, which you guys know I didn't love as well. I think I gave it four stars, but it was a really low four and I was not obsessed with it like everybody else was. People were freaking out about this book so I had really high expectations going in and they weren't met. I think that there was not enough like world building. I just feel like there was so much left unfinished and there wasn't really a lot of like urgency to it which I think like we were supposed to feel and I did love Hades like his character ended up being so good and I loved getting to know him but overall it just was a little lackluster to me so I can see why people were disappointed in this one definitely. Then there's Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne which I really liked. I just love Sally Thorne's writing so I know The Hating Game is her most popular but I really liked her second book which was the oh I don't even remember what it's called I really like that one but I also really love second first impressions it's a really sweet friends to lovers I like the heroine they work at a retirement village like it was just so wholesome and cute but I guess if you don't want that wholesomeness, cuteness in a romance, you might not like this. Someone also didn't like the Mind F series by S.T. Abby, which makes me really sad. I thought that was just so good. Like, she was a serial killer, killing off men who wronged her in her past, dating an FBI profiler who's trying to hunt her down. So... I don't know how you can get better than that. I love this. I loved all five of the books. I loved how everything turned out, but I guess it's okay you didn't like it. I just don't understand. Another one that hurts me is Destiny's Captive by Beverly Jenkins. It might be because Beverly Jenkins is more, like, not as angsty and, like, 
her books end up like wrapping up the romance pretty early and there's always like a secondary conflict at the end but I love this one. I don't know if you read this as a standalone or in the series. I think it reads best as a series but I'm sorry you didn't like this one. Then we have Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. I know a lot of people are reading this because it's so hyped and not liking it. I'm pretty sure Mina from Mina Reads really didn't like this book. I loved it. I like Sophie Lark and I loved how they were literally hating each other so much they're trying to kill each other. I love that in romance and so that's why I really like this book. That's really all I have to say. It was just a fun mafia romance, but I think the hype might get to some people where it's not as good as they were told it was by everybody else. Someone said A Court of Silver Flames, which I actually really loved. So this one, I don't know what made people hate it. It was just a lot about the heroine and her personal journey. I ended up really hating Reese and Feyre after A Court of Frost and Starlight, so I did not care about their characters in A Court of Silver Flames, but Nesta's character, I really loved her journey and her romance, so I did enjoy this one. There was First Come Scandal by Julia Quinn, which I have not read. I haven't read a lot of Julia Quinn's, like, most recent romances. I've read the Bridgerton series and I read the Smythe Smith series. I love her older stuff, but I have no idea how she writes today, so I don't know if I would like this or not. Casanova by T.L. Swan. T.L. Swan is an author I did not get to read in 2021, and is this her new book? I think a lot of people did not love this one. I could be wrong, but I don't know if I've seen people raving about this as much as they do her other series, unless this is book three in that series, but the stopover and the takeover people rave about, but I have not heard people raving about this one. Someone said The Kingmaker by Kennedy Ryan, which again just hurts my soul. I love this duet so much, but it might have been the hype, especially the hype that I give it, that they didn't love it as much as they thought they would, but this one was just so good. There's a cliffhanger ending. Such a good romance. It's like, well, okay, but I know some people don't love this because it does span a long time and they see each other like throughout the years and it's always like they never can be together. I love those kinds of romances, but if you don't like them spanning a long time, you might not like this one. Then we have Honey Girl, which I agree I didn't love because it was not marketed correctly whatsoever. It was supposed to be like a wake up in Vegas married kind of romance, but it was definitely more a personal journey of someone's identity and what they want to do with their life after school and their relationship with their family and it was barely a romance in my opinion and it was definitely marketed as a romance so I was disappointed in this one. Someone said Devil in Winter which I is another staple in the historical romance community that I'm surprised you didn't like. I'd love to know why you didn't like Devil in Winter and I will say I think I would have liked it better though if I read the series in order so maybe if that's what happened I don't know but I just really like this one. By Sin I Rise by Cora Riley I've heard a lot of people not love and I think one point was because the author decided to make it a duet and it should have been one book so so I am interested in reading this when both are out. I think the second one just came out, but I've heard nothing good about this first book. The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. I do think their new books have just not been hitting the spot after The Unhoneymooners. I love The Unhoneymooners, but The Honey Don't List I didn't love love, In a Holidays I didn't love, and this one I didn't love. So nothing is really that good that they're writing. They are fine, but not impressive. Someone did say The Lady of Rooksgrave Manor which I loved so much, but it is a reverse harem, so I don't know if it's you read reverse harem or not. It's a monster romance. It hit all the spots for me. I love this book. Beach Read by Emily Henry. I know a lot of people are hit or miss on, especially because some people love the fact that it, the romance in it, but some people say it's not a romance, so I don't know. I know people don't like it, so this really isn't surprising that this showed up on this list. Someone said A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Cole, which I know is really popular on TikTok right now, especially like if you want to cry. I was a sobbing mess when I read this, but I read it like four years ago and I really enjoyed it. So I don't know what would make this disappointing. Maybe you didn't cry, but I'd be really surprised if you didn't cry reading this book. We have Chloe Brown and this one I enjoyed but again it's something that's super hyped that some people might enjoy but not love and then that makes them disappointed in it because it's not as good as the hype is. Spoiler alert is another one that I've seen a lot of people really not enjoy. I really loved Spoiler Alert. I thought it was so cute and I loved the hero like sealed the deal for me. I loved him and his journey with dyslexia but I know like I said a lot of people who didn't love this book and I don't even remember why but I'm not surprised either that this is all on this list. Black Sunshine is a book that I myself did not love. I feel like the plot was a little confusing and I wasn't as engaged as I wanted it to be and I just did not care about the characters. I know that a couple books in the series I think have come out now and people really love them but I know I'm not alone in thinking the first book was pretty disappointing. The Initiation by Nikki Sloan is another really hyped book that came out 
a couple years ago, but a lot of people discovered this year. I didn't love it. I found it a little creepy. That was a dark romance that I did not want to venture down, and I did not love that scene at the end that everybody's obsessed with. I just thought it was weird. So I did not love this romance. I didn't really buy into it as much, and I don't know if she's gonna have a relationship with that guy's dad or not. Like, is that where the book is going? I don't know. We Have Bombshell by Sarah McLean, which I have not yet read, and I don't even know if I've heard a lot about it. I know people love Lisa Kleypas' new book, but I don't know how people feel about Sarah McLean's new book, but I haven't seen anybody raving about it, so I don't know what to expect when I go in. So maybe it's good that I'm lowering my expectations because I guess it was disappointing to someone. The Kimura Chronicles by Cora Riley. They said they read like the first three and didn't like them, and the first three are my favorite. I haven't continued on because I've heard the next ones are not good, though I know McKay does love a couple in the latter half of the series, but the first three are amazing to me, and I think I gave one of them four stars, but I really love the series, and I think it's so addicting and so good, especially compared to her other series, the Bound by Honor series. I loved the Kimura Chronicles, so it makes me sad that you didn't love it. Also, What Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. You guys know I didn't love this romance. I thought it was too into love and a little slow. I loved the hero. He was definitely my favorite part. I wasn't a fan of the heroine. The conflict was very obvious to me, and so I didn't love this book either. The Lady Gets Lucky by Jim and Shoop is one that I loved. I do think it was a little bit of a slower romance, but I loved this one, so that makes me sad that you didn't like this one. The Hating Game by Sally Thorne is another one that I think just blew up, and a lot of people are reading it and not necessarily like going to love it and I read this again years ago so I can't even tell you what someone would or would not like about this book. I did watch the movie and I thought it was just okay. I wasn't in love with the movie. I'm glad that romances are getting adapted though this one was not released in theaters which was weird. It was only released in like a few theaters throughout the U.S. but I thought it, the movie was just okay. It wasn't sold on the, the guy who played the hero, Josh, but I can see people picking this up and not loving the book. Someone did say Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. I did not like this book. I did not think the writing was really that good. We read it for Ravish by Romance, but I know Riley and Lacey, who were on the live show with me, did enjoy this book. I didn't love it. I didn't love the romance. I didn't like the heroine. I did not like the writing. So this one was a big miss for me as well. As a Hades and Persephone retelling, I just feel like I have not read a really good one. Um, I, if you have a good one, let me know. Someone said Real by Kennedy Ryan, and they did clarify to saying it's not as top tier as her other books, which I can see as a valid argument. Like, you were just disappointed you didn't love it as much as, like, the Grip series or the Kingmaker series. I do think I liked Grip and the Kingmaker better than Real, but Real was still a five-star read for me. I loved it. Twisted Games by Anna Huang. I actually was disappointed in book one. I gave book one three stars. I don't even remember what I didn't like about the book. I actually liked book two better than book one, and it gave me a lot of Princess Diaries 2 vibes, where she was a princess and having to find a proper match for her, and he was her bodyguard, and I really enjoyed it, but I think looking at reading book one with book two, that made me like book two better, so... I can see not liking book two as much, but book two was better than book one for me. Then there is The Legacy by L. Kennedy, and I know a lot of people were very disappointed in this book. I don't know anybody who, like, really, really loved it. I read one story in it, and it was okay, but then I stopped reading, and then I haven't had, like, the urge or desire to pick it up again because I know so many people don't love that book. I don't know, like, I think it's because it got so hyped on TikTok this year that she wanted to give the reader something and make money off of it because it was so hyped up, but I don't know if it was actually necessary to come out with this. And the last one is Make It Sweet by Kristen Callahan, which you guys know was also in my most disappointing reads of 2021. I know some people really love this one. I read it because Lacey loves it and Becca from Hello Lovely. This is one of her favorite reads of the year, but for me, it was so boring. Like, nothing happened. They were just staying at this inn together. The hero's decisions at the end were annoying to me, so I did not love this one either. And those are your most disappointing reads of 2021. I enjoyed talking about them with you, and I don't even know if I said this. This is every Everyone's opinions. If you like these or not, that's totally fine. If you loved it, great. If you didn't, that's fine. We're all just here to read books and we all have different opinions. One of my absolute favorite books could be someone's most hated book and someone's most loved book could be my most hated book. We all have our own opinions. So this was just a fun look at what you guys liked this year and what you didn't like. So let me know down below if you've read any of these and what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day.